Let's talk about art. Photography is an art form. Some people prefer to photograph a scene or an event and have it look exactly how it looked in real life. It's especially important in photojournalism. When it comes into photographic art, some of those lines can be crossed a little bit, especially with the development of artificial intelligence and new technology in Photoshop and Lightroom and so many others that brings AI into photography. What does that mean for photographers? There's a lot of talk out there about how AI is ruining photography, how it, people aren't able to tell the difference between a computer generated image and a real photograph. And those lines are continuing to blur as we move through time. And it's only going to become more blurry in the future. So what's the answer? It depends. What is your goal in photography? What kind of photography makes you feel good? If your photography resonates with humans, with other people, then you're going to be just fine. But there are ways to take photography and really get artistic with it, even without using artificial intelligence, but with still using some of the technology that's available. For me, I tend to sit on that line a little bit because sometimes I want to photograph something and just take the beauty of the scene and capture it exactly how I see it. And obviously that means doing some processing and bringing out the colors and just making sure that the photograph looks as good as I saw it in my mind. There are some arguments going back and forth in online photography groups about how much post-processing is permitted in photography. And of course, that just depends on the photographer. Some people like to go in there and replace the sky and remove certain elements in the photo. And that's fine. It's an art form and they can do whatever they like. Um, other people just want it as pure as possible. I like to say, you know, back, you know, 30 years ago, people didn't just post images of their photographic negatives of the film. They processed that film and shared the resulting photographs. Digital photography is similar. We take a digital file and it does need to be processed before it can be shown or displayed. It's just the way digital cameras work and that digital file works. It takes in the information and it's up to us as the photographers and the artists to take that digital information and get the very best we can out of it. Today, I want to share a sample of what can be done. Obviously, art is art. If it makes you happy in your soul, do it, whatever that might be. So. We're going to take a photograph and we're just going to show some quick techniques on how we might turn it into something a little bit more artistic. This was a few nights ago, nice sunset happening. I loved that these picnic tables were just empty and the, how the sun was lined up like almost directly with this line. I thought that was pretty cool. So took a couple of shots. This is one of them that, that we're going to explore right now. And I did some processing in Lightroom already you can kind of see the, you know, some of the stuff that I've done here, not too much, but just a little bit. But this was a good example of saying, hey, how can we take this and turn it, in, turn it into something else? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open it in Photoshop. So we're going to right click on the thumbnail down here. And I'm in Lightroom um, regular, not classic. This is regular Lightroom. And so we're going to edit in Photoshop. Photoshop is then going to open that up for us. Sometimes it takes a couple minutes. Sometimes it's super quick. So here's that image in Photoshop. And there's a couple things that we can do. I want to take this sky and make it look like it was a super long exposure and maybe see if we can blur this sky out. And so how we might do that is to go up into select. I don't know if you can see it, but on top of the screen, we have select. And if we just select the sky in Photoshop, it will do just that. And one of the cool things that we can do here is up in your top menu, there's filter, go to filter and come down to blur gallery and then path blur. And there's some really fun things that you can do in path blur here. You can see that it has the sky selected and it has slightly blurred it out. This little arrow right here tells us what direction that blur is going. So here's where it gets kind of interesting and where you can start to express yourself as an artist. You can leave that as it is, or 
you might try like bringing this little dot up to the center or where you might want the blur to emanate from. And then this arrow is the direction it's going. So maybe we want the blur to go up and out like so. So now we have a blur emanating from the center going straight out on the upper left of the photograph. Another cool thing to do is to do that again. So if we make another point just by clicking here, doing the same thing, going up the other direction. Now we have a blur starting in the middle and shooting out both directions. And this can create a really cool effect. And then you can play with this and, and however you might want it to look, I mean, have at it. It's, it's, it can be a lot of fun. Um, click again so that, that line stays straight. So then we have our selected, we have our, our blur paths selected. And look at this here, we have speed. This is 50% speed. Look what happens when we move it up. Look at that effect that it starts to do. That's 200% speed. We can go up to, you know, as high as you want to go. And it starts to do this really cool, kind of mystical type look to it. And I think that's totally fun. You know, I think it's fun. We'll just leave it there. It's kind of like heavenly almost, you know, like heaven's gates are opening up and it's a, it's a really, really cool look. So let's hit OK. And then Photoshop is going to process that and bring it into the photo. And then we're going to hit Deselect. So now we have this really cool looking sky. We're left with the water, which hasn't changed. But if we want to make this look like it was a super long exposure or you want to just soften the image a little bit more, we'll do the same thing. We need to make sure that we select just the water to do that. And to make that selection, we're going to come over to our lasso tool and then we're, then we're going to hold down the option key and we're going to make a little selection right on the base of this water, just on the outside of the frame. And we're going to click it and then we're going to go all the way up to the top, the horizon line. And we're going to click again and then let's select the horizon and just kind of bring our selection point all the way across that waterway. Something like that. We'll make another selection and then we'll bring it all the way across. I like to go just out of frame here to make sure we select it all. Select again, go down to the water line, select again, and then just kind of follow the line. We have this picnic table, so we want to go and click on the corner of the picnic table, just kind of follow that outline. This may not be perfect because we're doing it a little bit quick for demonstration, but you get the idea. Click, 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 and then we're going to follow that water line again to here, and then click on the picnic table and then just continue to outline those points like this. When you're doing this, you may want to zoom in a little tighter so that you can be sure you have everything selected just right. And then continue. This part doesn't have to be perfect, but just continue to select the area of the water. We have these birds, so we're going to select on the other side of them. Every time you click the mouse, then it'll create a new point and then just close the box. And so now we have a selection of the water and we're going to go up and do the same thing up to the filter and then down here to blur gallery and then to path blur. And here we can play around with it and we can either have our, our direction of the path going from left to right. We can move that arrow down toward the bottom a little bit. It's going to take a second to process, and then that'll just make the, the blur direction go down to the, like the left like that. I think it might even look better just keeping it like something like this, something like this, something like that. It just gives that soft, whimsical look to the water. So we're going to go ahead and click OK on that, and then deselect, and we'll zoom out. And we're left with something like this. Again, it's not totally perfect, but you get the idea of where you might start off from and how you might take a photograph and start to get super creative with it and see what you can create. Um, once we have our edits in, in Photoshop where we're happy with them, 
we are going to, we can either save it or just close it. And if we close it, it's going to ask if we want to save it, which we do. So we're going to save it. And then it's going to pull those changes back into Lightroom, open Lightroom back up for us and give us the new photograph that we just created. So here is the before, pull it into Photoshop, make some quick edit techniques, and then we can do something like this. And then from here, if we want to continue editing, then we can. So we can go ahead and select our sky and then continue to work with it. And we can increase that contrast if we want, pull down those highlights a little bit, maybe bring the exposure up just a little bit, maybe increase the whites, something like that. And, and look at that. I mean, it's just super cool. And then we might even do another mask where we do a gradient radial gradient down here, down the middle. And we might increase that exposure just a little bit. We might warm it up just a little bit. And then actually see what, the, what we might want to do is we can take this mask and then we can duplicate it and invert it. So everything that isn't in that circle is selected. And so it might look like this. But then what if we don't want the sky as part of that? We can go up to our mask, hit subtract, hit subtract sky. And so now everything outside of that circle that isn't the sky is going to be selected. And then we can pull that exposure down to kind of give it a little bit more of a dramatic look. Maybe we decrease the amount of shadow in there. It's a good start. It's a good start. And then to end, I always like to go down here and maybe bring down those midtones, bring up the highlights. Yeah, look what that starts to do. And then if you want to maybe bring down the clarity just to soften the whole thing up, add some negative dehaze, gives that soft look, and then some vignetting. And we'll add just a tiny bit of texture back in there. So we might end up at something like this. So in just, gosh, 10, 15 minutes, we go from this as the before to this as an after, which is a whole different dimension, like a whole different world that we can create, which I think is pretty rad. So. I hope you've had fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm not saying you need to do this with every photo, but sometimes if you just find that little spark of creativity and you want to explore a little bit, this is a really great way to do that. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll talk again soon.